We hope you enjoy this podcast. With over 100 books under his belt, Bill Vincent is a true master of the written word. His works are a treasure trove of knowledge and inspiration, available at all major bookstores and online platforms. So, don't miss out on the opportunity to expand your mind and be entertained. Pick up a book by Bill Vincent today. Praise God. I'm going to go ahead and jump on into what we're going to hear this morning. Hallelujah. I pray that everything comes forth the way that it needs to come forth. But uh, I, we also have to pack up. Hallelujah. Today. Praise God. Because Friday we're in Springfield. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, but either way, uh, we're just. It doesn't matter. Uh, but what we're talking about is transition. And this is what we're supposed to be doing right now. I think that's why the enemy tries to get stirred up right in the midst of that. Hallelujah. And uh, most people, if they knew they were being took astray or used of the enemy, they wouldn't want that. Hallelujah. So, so it's not about flesh and blood. It's about principalities and powers. But right now we are, we are in a transition. We are turning, hallelujah. It's not just, uh, we had a, a natural transition by moving one from one place to another, but at the same time now we have a transition in the spirit realm. And I want you to pay attention, hallelujah, because every person in this room is actually going to be affected by this. Hallelujah. And this is a time when we are moving forward because we saw so many miracles and healings take place. People totally healed by the power of God. And that's what we're transitioning into. Hallelujah. And I'm believing God for some big things over this next season. Hallelujah. And I don't have a whole lot I'm going to share probably. But we're just going to share whatever God says to share. And we're going to go from there. Hallelujah. And uh, first of all, uh, right now I believe many Christians are, are right exactly in a place where it's a change of place. It's a, it's a transition. And, and it's, it's a matter of choosing which way to go. And I believe even yet now, I believe there's at least one more student that is choosing to make a choice. Whether they show up or not is not the, the deal. It's, it's they're making a choice which way to go already. Within their hearts, they've already made a choice. And uh, as far as a man or a woman of God, if you are in a place of transition where God's trying to take you somewhere and he's wanting to take you to a new place, then anything that God says that he wants to do, our answer should always be yes and amen. Not, well, I will if I had this or if this was right or, if, you know, I can do this. If there's ifs with it, then that's not a commitment. Hallelujah. So we're, we're going to see some changes, I believe, even yet to come. But that's okay. Hallelujah. Because I know that God's doing some things. And what's happening right now, what was familiar, uh, is no longer going to be familiar. It's not even going to be in our sight anymore. And, and we might even be feeling a little shaky. But I'm telling you, it's vital not to lose sight on God. Because he's going to strengthen us on the way to go. And how to do it. Praise God. And anytime there's a change, praise God, it looks like a lot of mess before it's good. I mean, if you, if you uh, paint a room, such as this room got painted this week, <clears throat> if you paint a room, it's, it's going to be change. Hallelujah. First of all, you've got to pull everything away from the walls, and, and it kind of gets things messed up. Hallelujah. But the end result is things are fresh and new, and, and, and it's different. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, that's what God's doing. He is actually using a, his paintbrush. He is painting our path right now. And, and, but the thing is, first thing he had to do was remove all the furniture. He had to pull everything out. He had to pull everything out that was known as familiar. He had to change it up, praise God. And uh, one illustration, a guy told me one time he was blind, and he said, you know, he says, you know, what's really awesome, he goes, my life, is, and he was a blind man, that was kind of almost happy being blind. I mean, it was a very unusual man. But he said, he said this, and I never forgot it. He said, you know, sometimes, he goes, I ask my caretaker, 
to change my furniture and move things around. And, and he said, that's not usually good for a blind man because he, that we get used to our certain furniture being in a certain location. But he would ask her to change everything. The reason was because he got bored. And he said, if she changed things around, I had to find everything. So it became a discovery, like a hunt, to find out all the new things that were set in place. And I'm telling you, that's what we are doing right now. We are on a transition, and we're changing some things, and I believe that there's going to be so much change. Hebrews 13, 5 says this, I will never leave you nor forsake you. We've got to understand that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. God is going to be, he is in control. He's taken us to that new place, praise God. I believe that we will have sessions of deliverance and everything else over the ne- next few weeks. Why? Because it's time. It's time. We can't deal with that anymore. Hallelujah. And uh, also in Psalms 119, 105, it says this. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Come on, we got to understand the word of God. The word of God, whether it's a biblical word or the prophetic word, I'm telling you, it's a light. And it's guiding and directing us. And I'm telling you, we've got to have that guidance. We've got to have that direction. And if we are in transition... God spoke to us this morning. He said, the good news is that you're heading somewhere. (laughs) A certain destination. Because it's a passage from one state, style, place to another. So everything is moving somewhere. Hallelujah. And, And we don't want to end up going around in circles in this. That could be the most dangerous thing. And God wants to place a spiritual, supernatural, and I wrote this in one of the books, a spiritual compass that is wired to point you off in the right direction to the Father's heart. Exactly where he wants to take us, praise God. And it's a special place. It's a place where we get our bearings. You know, a lot of people don't realize bearings uh, uh, in your wheels and everything If it wasn't for those bearings, your wheels wouldn't go perfect. Hallelujah. They would be all chaotic, and you wouldn't get anywhere. And I'm telling you, we got to have our bearings. we got to have everything so that we can grow and get to that next place, praise God, that God wants to take us. Okay, Leviticus chapter 8. Praise God. And those listened to on CD, because this is highly recommended for every student, Uh, Leviticus chapter 8, verse 35 through or 33 through 35 Leviticus 8 33 through 35 and it says this he shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation in seven days <clears throat> so that means he's going to remain for seven days until the days of consecration be at the end of the seven days shall he consecrate you for he should he hath done this day so the Lord hath commanded to do to make an atonement for you Therefore, shall you abide at your door of the tabernacle of the congregation day and night, seven days. Keep the charge of the Lord that you die not, for so I have commanded. Now, first of all, the seven days is the thing that God took me into this morning. I want us to think about this this morning because the number seven is a very powerful thing. It means completion. It means perfection. So I believe God's going to begin uh, uh, starting after next Saturday. After next Saturday, I believe God's calling uh, those who are going to be part of this, those that are believing God and those that are wanting to go forward, seven days of either fasting and and prayer. Hallelujah. So however God leads you, it, it could be a meal, it could be all day, it could be seven days in a row, you know, but seven days of, of, of doing something that you normally haven't done of fasting and prayer for seven days, starting next after next Saturday. So it's going to start Sunday uh, after next Saturday. And the reason I'm saying this is because this is the thing, because there is something important that God wants to accomplish. And he did accomplish in the scripture that I'm talking about. It was a serious time of absolutely necessi- uh, necessary in order to, to prepare to complete for that new ministry or new wave that God had in these people's lives in this day because there's something important about the eighth day come on and on the and god told me to do this once before i believe and and but i didn't have the uh memory of that until now hallelujah and i'm telling you eight means new beginnings 
And so Aaron, uh, in the scripture that I just released, and uh, certain holy practices and involved as his two sons, and he had promised, I'm telling you, this was a time where he just laid his life down for seven days. They laid their lives down for seven days, and on the eighth day, it was kind of a time of new beginning, a new fulfillment. So, so what I'm believing by the Spirit of God is, it, is it's going to start on the Sunday, praise God. And what I mean is it's going to be like a day of celebration in the realm of the Spirit on the eighth day. Hallelujah. And uh, so after the sacrifice, death, offerings, came seven days of consecration. See, that's what's happened is, is it's going to be seven days of God pulling out, taking out everything that's left. Now, God will bring us purging, discipline, and what I call suffering for seven days. Suffering for God, suffering for Christ for seven days. I believe starting next week, it will be seven days of what will be called suffering. Why? Because our flesh ain't going to like this. Because it's about a big picture. Hallelujah. And, and as I was doing this this morning, as I was getting ready, I just now realized we did this in the revival before the revival really burst. But we, what we did was we had a big party for the seven, eighth day. Hallelujah. I mean, we just all went and just tore up some food and, and just celebrated. Like, celebrated like it was a new thing. Celebrated as like God already fulfilled everything. So, so, so I believe that we need to begin to do this, and we need to begin to get ready for this because it's time for us to understand. It's time for celebration. Hallelujah. It's time for us to un acknowledge that we are going somewhere and understand during these seven days that God's talking about to get us to that new place of healings, miracles, signs, wonders, whatever God has, that it can turn into 40 days. Did you hear what I just said? It could turn into 40 years, just like the Israelites. Because it's, it's, a, it's a matter of how do you respond. If God tells you to start dealing with stuff, it's how you're going to respond, praise God. Because that's the big difference. Hallelujah. How are we going to respond? When God begins to pull and purge and try to get us, are we going to respond with just a little bit? Not acknowledging that we have anything wrong with us. You know, that's the biggest problem with a lot of the church today is we assume we are just fine. We have no problems. We have nothing going on. We're holier than thou attitudes. And I'm telling you, it's time for us to acknowledge that he is on the throne and that we have a we, uh, flesh that is weak. We make mistakes. We are repentive. We ask him to come and set us free. And I'm telling you, there's so much sin in the church that has to be uh, coming into cleanliness. Hallelujah. So it's a matter of how long, how long do you want to go through? How long do you want to have this happen? So we made the choice, seven days or 40 days or 40 years. We made the choice of how long we're going to go through the, the consecration because let me tell you, whether or not you get on board with what God's going to do in Revival Waves of Glory Ministries, it's not about this is a transition for, for us as a person. I believe this is a worldwide church that God's going to begin to deal with things and say uh, it depends on how long you want to go through this because we shouldn't have to suffer. We shouldn't have to go through things, hallelujah. We shouldn't have to worry about where our next meals and, and, and finances and the pay the bills and all those things. We shouldn't have any of that. And I'm telling you, part of the things that's going on right now is people aren't acknowledging God's trying to take us from one place to another. And because of that, they're suffering. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm not going to suffer. In other words, I'm going to take this seven days that God's laying on our hearts, and I'm going to prophetically acknowledge it, and I'm going to prophetically do exactly what I need to do. Fasting, prayer, just spending time with the Lord for seven days, and then celebrate. Come on. Why? Because I know that it's, it's worked already for me in the past, and I know it's going to work again. I'm not going to do it religiously. I'm just going to do it. Hallelujah. We are supposed to have the glory of God to be revealed in the church. But we can't have the glory without suffering. You can't have the glory without laying your flesh down. You know, and some of us, I'm telling you, 
we get this attitude that we're so far advanced more than the others. Let me tell you something. One specific student thinks they're so far more advanced than everyone else. And all it is is pride and arrogance. And everything that God tries to deal with becomes a place where we belittle and bring that down because it's we don't admit that we really have any problems at all. And I'm telling you, I believe that the least of the students is probably going to become the most. And the one that thinks they're the most is probably going to become the least. Because it's not about thinking and comparing ourselves with one another. Our hearts are supposed, and our lives are supposed to be compared to Jesus. We always fall, fall short of the glory of God. We all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. Because if I think I can have God show up in my life with his presence, with his glory, i got to understand there's going to be suffering in that. Because my flesh and things that my flesh likes, I won't be able to have. i got to make changes. My own life, i got to make changes. We all got to make changes if we're going to get to this next place. You got to think about the Israelites when they were in the desert. Think about how many people didn't make it to the promised land. They had prophetic words. They had all the benefits and all the things. They were led by Moses, and and God poured out signs and wonders, manna from heaven, supernatural provision, continuously all through their time. And I'm telling you, many, many, many people did not even see the promised land. And I'm telling you, we've got to understand, it doesn't matter how many prophetic words you have. It doesn't matter what church you're connected to. It doesn't matter if you uh, uh, graduate from one of the, uh, uh, a good school of, of ministry. It doesn't matter if you even get licensed or ordained by anyone. It ain't going to change anything if you don't deal with the own things in your own heart. It's not going to have anything to do with those things. And understand, this is a prophetic thing that God's speaking right now. It's about transition, but at the same time, it's about exactly, specifically, not just the world, but revival waves of glory. New beginnings means new things, things that you don't know, that aren't familiar to you. Just look. at the scriptures we've been talking about this morning. Aaron and Aaron's two sons, they died after their consecration because they brought strange fire from the Lord. Fire came out of the presence of the Lord and consumed them because they were doing it wrongly. You know, even the assignment that God told me to give the students, pick a chapter out of the Defeating the Demonic Realm book that you might see that you've dealt with sometime in your life. Most people, they had, first thing they wrote was, there's many, many chapters they've had to deal with that could relate to them. But if they were to have to pick one, they picked one. And I'm telling you, God told me that this was what was going to unlock the passion for the next level of healings and miracles. And I told everybody that. That this assignment was going to unlock an inner passion that we did, that people weren't able to tap into. Because a lot of things that we've had, even in the assignments, most of the sermons and stuff has been coming from more of a religious place of preaching and teaching and just sharing the Word of God. But I wanted to unlock that passion, and that's what God wanted to do was unlock something that deep within your heart to get you to go to places of, of personal uh, intimacy with God and relay that to people's lives so that change comes. 
In other words, it's anointing that I was wanting to unlock. And I'm telling you how serious every person took the assignment is how much they really want to have the passion and the anointing. And that's exactly, and I ain't going to say that any different. And everyone, and I'm kind of preaching to the, to, to the students that aren't here this morning because it's, it's, I want you to understand something this morning because right now that is a congregation, whether you're here or not. You are the congregation of Revival Ways of Glory. And this morning what I'm saying this for is because we have a new level we're about to go to, and it requires anointing. It requires you to acknowledge, look at your self and magnif- and, and with almost like a magnifying glass and look over your life just to see is there any trace of this or this or this and if we keep looking at our life as is just this 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 well kept clean place we're never going to have change a preacher I'm kind of jumping off the page and I knew I was going to do that at the revival John Kilpatrick talked about one of the great things, and I think I'm going to try to see if I can get this set sometime as soon as I can. But John Kilpatrick talked about one thing that was very, very, very awesome. And that is about climates, about atmospheres. And let me tell you something. People don't realize sometimes, many times, and many, many times people say when they're in a service, I'm set free, I'm delivered, I'm healed. And then they go back to their house, their home, and they're, they're, they just kind of lose everything. And God gave a revelation to John Kilpatrick about the climate that they go into needs to be cleansed. Hallelujah. And he even gave scriptural base that was just so powerful. And I don't want to preach this this morning. I'm just kind of sharing this a little bit. But sometimes I believe people come here and they have the climate that they come into. And, and, and they, they, they admit to things. And they, they, they go ahead and, and, and say, yes, you know, I'm going to deal with this. and I want to deal with that. And, or, or they receive some anointing and they have a good climate right here while they're here. And then they go back to their church. You know, and if you have a climate at your church that's religion, then you're going under that climate. And it doesn't matter if you go and you say, well, my heart's not for that. Let me tell you something. If you go into a bar, how many know the climate's different than the church? And the climate's different religious than it is wholehearted after God. And so the thing I'm saying this morning is, is, is we got to understand that we have different climates that we're going to be under. And if your home needs to be cleansed, it needs to be cleansed. I don't wish this was upon anybody, but this is what's happened. I've been a teacher of Bible schools. I've been, I've been in ministry for... Oh, just over 20 years of doing ministry. I've been in so many different ministries, and I've preached and and ministered. And I'm telling you, every time that I've went to deal with somebody and and tell them that, you know, we have to go this way or that way or they need to make adjustments or there's sin in their life or, or something was being dealt with. And they didn't respond to my nudging to the Holy Spirit's nudging. Most of those people are at the same place today as they were 10, 15, however many years ago. They are still at that same place. And my heart's desire for every student is not for you to be in the same place that you are years later. Because even if it's only me and two, three, four, or five other students, as far as me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, and as far as me and my house, we're going to go forward. And if you get irritated and upset because of things that I say, you know what that is? That is nothing but the flesh doesn't like it. Because the Spirit would take wisdom first.
Remaining in the presence is the utmost importance. Because that's what we have to do. If we want this transition to be complete and be good, we must remain in the presence. We must remain in the place where God has and, and, and pour out upon us because we got to understand too many ministries, too many men and women in ministries and leaders are dying. And I'm not talking about literally, but spiritually because the anointing oil of the Lord is upon them and they aren't remaining at the doorway of the tabernacle. They aren't remaining in the presence of God. The anointing comes, but they don't remain where God wants them to remain. They don't go where God tells them to go. They don't make the decisions to do whatever God wants them to do. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how big you are. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. It doesn't matter how many ministries you've been under. It doesn't matter how many times you've been ordained. It doesn't matter any of that. We can all die. And what I'm not talking about natural, I'm talking about in the spirit. I'm talking about having deadness on the inside. You know what's funny is uh, uh, most people that I see uh, that uh, operate in such a level of pride to where they don't think that they have any problems to deal with. You know, I understand a little bit whenever somebody has pride and they're walking in healings, miracles, signs, wonders, prophesying, people being set free, and millions of people uh, uh, being, be following them. I understand a little bit of them falling into some pride because they're kind of high and lifted up. But you know, a lot of the people that I've seen fl having pride in, in all areas of, of ministry, I'm telling you, most of those people don't operate much in anything at all. They just see themselves as a higher place that they shouldn't be seeing themselves. And I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if you could prophesy. It doesn't matter if you do miracles. It doesn't matter if you have this or that. If you see yourself higher than God, higher than his principles, higher than all the other people in the school, then I'm telling you, you have a problem. And we've got to deal with that, praise God. You know, there's all, there's some of the students right now have potential to pass me up Many, many, many places. And I thank God for that. Why? Because we're still in the same position. We're still in the same team. It doesn't matter. I don't want to always be the big. I don't always want to be over everybody else. I want God to raise up a team, a ministry, a supernatural glory uh, machine because God's wanting to release new people into new things. Hallelujah. Praise God. Your car never started or what? No, I'm just kidding. Hallelujah. All right. Now, there is a promise of new anointing that comes, new beginning, and new beginnings as established. But I'm telling you, we've got to have it with the presence. We can't go to that next level. I, I'm preaching this like to every student that, that, that isn't here, and I'm just saying some things. Why? Because sometimes we don't realize that God has a bigger picture. Our life is not just our little picture. Come on. Hallelujah. And I told them last night, I'm going to preach this just like everybody was here. Now, many people want the supernatural miracles, signs, wonders, but they do, they, uh, we do need them, and I, I thank God for them. But, but such acts of, of works, so to speak, have an eternal weight of glory. Come on. And I'm telling you, we have to be sanctified. We have to be healed. We have to be set free. We have to stay in the place where God has us. And God is wanting to transition. That's what he was talking about last night, transition. And I'm telling you, that means he wants to take us from one place to another. He wants to change some things. You know, sometimes I feel like we're like Moses right now. And we're kind of like... We feel like God's just saying, come on, do you, I mean, I, I'm going to send my angel before you. You're going to go into the promised land. You know, you're going to have all the promises I've given you. And that's all glorious and good. But praise God, I don't want to go without God. I mean, I don't want to go without God. And what I'm saying right now this morning is I, I believe we've had some student transition right now. We have some people that don't just don't like to have to deal with something. And that's okay. But you know what? There's still some people, even in the stool right now, just a, I mean, we, we don't have that many left, but there's still some people that just don't see that they could have a problem. 
I don't know about you, but I look at myself daily and I'm like, I am no comparison to Jesus. And I don't care how much anointing I can flow in. I don't care if I can walk into a service and, and see miracles. I don't care if I can, you know, uh, do this or do that. You know, the enemy constantly tries to raise people up to make themselves see themselves higher than, than what they really are. And I'm telling you, I don't care about all that right now. Right now, I'm going to magnify uh, uh, with a magnifying glass, go over my life and look and look and look until everything's clean. And God spoke at the beginning of this, and what he was saying was that he is calling the team of ministry, he is calling the, the school and, 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 and revival ways of glory in the coming, uh, probably within a week, that we're going to have like a seven days of, of, just, of just fasting, prayer, and intimacy with the Lord. Seven days of just spending time with the Lord, seven days of, uh, of just fasting, prayer, whatever, however God leads, whether it's a meal here, a meal there. And then at the eighth day, it's going to be a day of celebration. In other words, it's going to be a day just like where we have won and we have all that we need. Come on. And, and, and as I was saying this this morning, I'm reiterating myself to kind of catch up where I'm getting ready to go next, is this morning... God spoke about this, and as I was preaching it, as I was releasing this, and I did this all this morning, so I didn't have this, and, and I, I, I kind of was laying it out, and I'm telling you, I, I was reminded, uh, God told me to do the very same thing at the revival before it burst. I told all the students we have to have seven days, and at the last day we had like a big old buffet type of thing, and we just tore it up celebration style, Hallelujah. Come on, I don't know about you, but that, that last day is going to be a good celebration. Now, I'm writing right now about God's glory, so to speak. I'm releasing some things. I'm talking about this expanding God's glory that's coming. And I'm telling you, we as a church don't realize our lives can't be the same to have that new level. I don't care if we go to church every week. I don't care if we, we flow in some kind of gifts and anointing. That's one thing I like about people like Sam and Paula. Because I don't know about you, but there's a relevant anointing, especially upon them. And I'm telling you, they can, do, they can flow in some things. They've been in ministry. They've had churches. They've done a lot in their years. But they are at a humility state right now that is so awesome just saying, God, whatever's in me, just get it out. Daily they are laying their lives down. Daily they're repenting. And I'm telling you, we got to understand, and I'm not trying to lift them up right now. I'm just trying to give you an example because some people that flow in anointing uh, have more of a chance of looking at their self more than they should. It's the people who have nothing going on that are looking at themselves wrongly right now. In order to get to that secret place, there's those three things that I talked about already, and I just talked about them without giving you points. Consecration, staying in the secret place, and sanctification. Because we can't have it without God taking things out of our hearts. And like I said, the seven days will be seven days of suffering. That's what it really is called. I don't know about you, but fasting is not something that I just enjoy to do. It can get suffering. <laughs> You know, one day is no big deal, but you start to get to that third day, and that's whenever it starts messing me up. Hallelujah. Seven days. Of, uh, and I'm not saying that we have to fast fully and everything else, because right now it's just about l having a sacrifice for seven days. And I talked about the story of Aaron and two sons and how they had to do that for seven days before the eighth day. Come on. And I'm telling you, the eighth day was new beginnings. That's what we're in right now. You know, your history affects the present. Your present affects the future. In other words, something in your life has gotten you to a place that you are now. Come on. I believe most of us are at a very good place. Come on. But at the same time, I believe there's something also in our lives right now that can get us to that next place. In other words, we have to deal, we have to learn to deal, we have to learn to acknowledge everything, 
And I'm telling you, I want to continue. I want to get to that place. And I'm telling you, true to God's word, God intended to give the nation of Israel their inheritance. He promised that. Our challenge is this. Many of us have been satisfied. Many of us have been satisfied. Like I said, one of the most powerful things that John Kilpatrick released this past week was him getting the revelation that there is climates that we deal with. If you get around other people that are doubting, that climate can affect you. You get around people that are religious, that climate can affect you. Come on. You can get from one place to another and the very atmosphere can affect you. But more than anything, we got to want God's presence. With this in mind, I want you to understand that there is a powerful place of intercession. This place is being offered to those who want to see history made. I don't know about you, but I want to see history made. I don't want to just have church. I don't want to just have a small group of students that goes through and gets a piece of paper and we just say, well, good job, you're done. I want to be able to see something creative take place. Ministries birth, new new horizons opened up, people being saved, people being healed, people being delivered. Now, if you are uh, if you are heeding to the scripture right now, in other words, a place of intercession, then I'm telling you, it's for you. God is bringing a new beginning, the anointing and priestly ministry to us. He is wanting to release. It's almost like God is looking to and fro somebody to throw an anointing upon. And either we, either we line up to get to that place that he's wanting us or we're not going to line up at all. God's saying transition. He's saying I'm wanting to take you from a place of, of just status quo into a place of anointing, glory, signs, wonders, miracles, healings, and many, many people coming into the kingdom of God. But you can st- choose to stay where you are or you can choose to go to this new direction. And I'm telling you, that's what's happening right now. And like I said before, I believe there's one specific student still left that God has been trying to turn, trying to pull, trying to nudge. But you know what? They are, they're not heeding to the word of the Lord. They're not heeding the transition. Come on. You know, right now, more than ever, if we can look at our lives and, and see ourselves as spotless, you know, then I think we're looking through some kind of blind eyes. I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to condemn us and, and condemn you, but what I am trying to do is get us to understand It's only by the grace of God that we have been through and made it through all that we made it through. What I'm asking is we need to deal with our hearts. We need to look at ourselves constantly because sin and glory does not mix. Only somebody that has a history of intimacy with God can pray in a way like Moses prayed. God, I'll put my tent right here. I'm not going in the promised land unless you go with me. And God to say, okay. I don't know about you, but I don't think a lot of the body of Christ right now has that kind of intimacy. Come on. I don't believe a lot of us as a body of Christ has that type of intimacy. I'm putting myself in the same boat with you guys. I'm telling you, it's not. See, it's not just about myself and everyone else. Because understand, God can 
cause things to take place. But what I'm believing God for and what I believe God's speaking right now is our transition is into a move of God. Come on. A mighty move of God. You know, I, I know there was hundreds saved this weekend, this past week. I know there was hundreds saved and, 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 and many, many healed. I'm talking about miracles that were so tangible, the wheelchairs, people just walking and set free and oxygen, all the different things supernaturally. And some of the best miracles that you, I've never seen in my life. But you know what? The only difference between people who can flow in that right now and us is our history. Because that level of miracles, signs, wonders, healings, and, 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 and harvest is available for all of us. We have an inheritance. We are supposed to flow in this mighty, mighty anointing. We're supposed to flow in this mighty anointing. And I'm telling you, we need to understand there is so much new levels of glory that God's wanting to release upon us as the body of Christ. But at the same time, there is so many people that are satisfied at the place they are right now. I'm not satisfied. You know what? It kind of set me back a little bit. Even though I've seen thousands of healings and miracles in my lifetime, seeing people rush the stage and crash onto the altar, crying and weeping, saying, God, help us. People coming into the kingdom of God. People getting out of wheelchairs and running back and forth on the, uh, in the front. I'm telling you, that's kind of a thing that I want to see every day. Like I said right now, I'm not looking at this right here because I, I can see something bigger. I'm not going to look at the small numbers right now because it's not about that. My last transition into revival looked, like, looked kind of like this. And I like this more than that. Why? Because sometimes all it takes is a few nuggets. All it takes is a few things, a few people of God that really press in. Even if you look at the 12 disciples, there was not that many that really pressed in. You know, 11 of them went forward, but only a handful, a few of them really went forward. Come on. The others were kind of participants by effect. You know, we look at Peter as one that fell, and we kind of laugh at him because he took his eyes off the Lord. Who are we to laugh at that? How many of us, if, if the Lord invited you on the water, would we fall? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think I'd be down in the water myself. Why? Because we look at circumstance. We look at the waves. We look at the wiles of the enemy. We look at things. And then next thing we know, we have something happen. And what I'm saying is this next week, this next couple of weeks, is God dealing with our hearts, going through a time of what, what God would even call suffering. But all it is is it's causing our flesh to lay down. But then on the eighth day, because perfection is seven. We come into that perfection. And the eighth day, I'm not saying we're going to be perfected. <laughs> because how many know uh, it, it's a continuous of becoming new. That's what we've been doing. We're becoming new. But at the same time, that eighth day is going to be a time of new beginnings, glory, things that we've never been in before. On more than one occasion, Moses stood in the gap for others. Because of an intimacy that he had with God, the special place he had with God, he was able to stand in the gap for everyone else. How many would like to have that kind of closeness with God? To be able to affect people. Now he is... For those who have, who are in transition... In this season right now, I want to say, if we abide in the secret place of the tabernacle, God is offering a powerful place of intercession, things to get done. 
the kind of season that we're in right now. God wants to bring you into a place of drawing from history. Interceding for whatever God puts on your heart. Your history with God can affect the world. What one person can do with God can affect the entire world. One thing I told the students in the beginning of the school was they're not responsible for themselves anymore. They're responsible for every man, woman, boy, and girl that they're going to be affecting, that they're going to win, that they're going to preach to, that they're going to minister to. So every time we make a decision to go this way or that, we're making a decision that's going to affect people. Our decisions affect. It's not just affecting ourselves. We're not just corrupting our own bodies, our own selves. We're corrupting. We are more or less hindering the very things that God's wanting to do in somebody's life. Come on. It's kind of like the, it's a wonderful life memory or, or, or analogy. I'm telling you to where, you know, the guy, you know, finds out, he, I wish I'd never been born because it looked like everything was bad. And then as soon as he found out what it would like be like if he hadn't been born, man, it was a lot worse not being born. One life affects so many others. I've told the story many times. There was a tent meeting uh, of, a, of a man uh, way, way back when. And he was having a tent meeting. He was preaching and everything else. And, 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 and they were having good services. But one night, they, they, they opened the tent, they turned on the lights, and they, they got ready to have a service, and, and there was about, uh, they, they said that there was one man there that showed up, one boy is actually what it was, showed up to sit down, and, and, and they went ahead and started the service for that one boy. Now, there was other people there of staff members, I believe, and, and type of thing, but I'm saying the main crowd was the boy. And in the midst of that service, they give an altar call for people to come and be saved. And, and this young boy goes up and he prays, asked Jesus into his heart, got set free, got born again right then. And that boy was Billy Graham. Now let's think about something. I don't know about you, but that tent meeting was successful. You know, if they had an offering, it might have been a couple pennies. I don't know. But I'm telling you, right now, today, there is so much that took place in Billy Graham's life. And I'm telling you, the fruit comes from the man in the tent. And Billy Graham. See, one effect can change a world. You might not be the one changing the world, but you might be one that's going to be part of that change. Come on. And most people don't remember these type of things, but understand God does. And what I'm saying, we are in transition, and I want to affect the world in my life. Whether it's me, it's not about name. I don't want that. So many people are always saying, you know, Put your name in front of all the ministry things. It's not about that. How many of us would like to have a visitation? Just God's goodness come upon your life. You ask God to show you things and he shows you. You ask God to give you things and he gives them to you. It's a time of being hidden in Christ. It's a time of God taking you a place He's never been, we've never been before. And this morning, the reason I'm saying this is because we have gone to revival to get something. Because I I don't know about you, but I needed something fresh. I wanted something that changed me and, and opened up a place of fire in my belly again. We went to the first night, and right off the bat, miracles took place. The woman healed of five strokes, totally set free. Miracle takes place. Very first night, and other miracles, many healings and miracles take place. Blind eyes, mute, uh, not mute, but I, 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 they might have been healed, but I know blind eyes and deaf ears were open. Supernaturally, right off the bat. The next morning, it was still awesome, and, 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 and just being there was awesome. 
And you know, we were physically wore out. Already thinking of that five-hour drive to get home. We was already thinking about that, going home. And, 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 and you know, even in the midst of that time, and I know the children sitting in, in, in three, four, five-hour services is very extended. But at, at the same time, we were like, we've got to have one. We've got we to gotta stay. We almost, we, we was, I mean, we were talking about it. Let's just go home. We, we've got some. But you know what? The greatest miracles, impartation, and all kinds of supernatural things took place on that last service that we would have missed. And I'm telling you, it was huge. That last service was like a whole other level. And I'm telling you, the reason I'm saying this is because now God said, on the way home, I had planned to preach this and that. Uh, uh, before I left, I got sermons ready for this weekend. And then on the way home, God changed it all. Because now he's like, now you've got something new. Now it's time to transition into it. So last night we rekindled that fire a little bit. Now we're going to transition. We're going to get so wholly jealous of things to where we have to have a move of God. It's not, about, it's not about name. It's not about fame. It's about glory. It's about God coming into a house to draw people unto him. And I'm telling you, we've got to get excited this morning. We've got to get turned on so that we can really set the world upside down. Set people on fire. And I'm telling you, this new passion is a new passion just like I had it last time. And I'm telling you, I'm not satisfied. In fact, I'm grieved. I've been going through all the... Defeating the Demonic Realm Assignments. Writing a one-page, full-page essay on things that we've dealt with sometime in our life just from one chapter of that book and and most people I'm telling you blew me away and I gave a lot of bonus points but there was other people that blew me away but a whole different well because you don't know what we got to understand like I said earlier the assignment was to unlock a passion inside of your heart to realize this is a place I used to be and this is a place I'm coming into and, and I come through it. I've come through it. And I'm, I'm it, 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 it's God's strategy to unlock a door in your heart. And I'm telling you, how serious are we? How serious are we right now? How serious are you right now? How serious are you? If God was to come into this to come into our lives right now and say, I want to give you revival. I want to give you my glory and everything else. You know, some people would be consumed by the fire of his glory. Come on. Remember Aaron's two sons, there was a strange fire that took place. And it ended up consuming them. I don't know about you, but that kind of glory is kind of scary. But I'm telling you, we can't expect to stay with the way we are. And to have a new place. Come on. It's almost like we're in the stage, I've said it earlier, where we're going through construction. You kind of move everything out, you cover stuff up, and you start tearing things out. It's a mess, it's a big mess. I mean, you put plastic up and it still gets everywhere. Sanding and blasting and tearing and ripping and doing. It doesn't matter how hard you work, it's still a disaster. But then whenever things starts coming back together again, wow. It's the same place, but now it's different the same place but now it's all brand new I'm telling you we're either going to be the same people but we're going to be of a new level we're going to be of a new place and I don't know about you but if God wants to come and fix my house anytime come on change my house hallelujah I'm not talking about the clay body that it's in I'm talking about the 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 inside of my heart. That's his house. 
I don't know about you, but it needs to be swept. Hallelujah. I mean, I, I feel like we need to have some of those RoboVex, you know, the ones that go around automatically, just running around inside of us. Hallelujah. Continually supercharge that thing to never die. Hallelujah. Forget the charger. Just leave it on. Hallelujah. But you know what? It's not that I'm saying that we have a whole lot of things, but all it takes is a few dust bunnies to mess up the whole house. Praise God. I mean, sometimes the children come home from school, and within five minutes, they can throw their book bag down, their shoes off, and their jacket off, and the house looks like a disaster. Just in a moment. Just like five minutes ago, it was perfect. There was nothing out of place. And they've been home, and now they got a sock over there and a shoe over there. I don't know if they take it off as they're moving. I don't know. And, and jacket here and a book bag over there. And, of course, they had to open it up and take everything out. And I'm saying a lot of us as a body of Christ, we don't realize things do look a mess sometimes, but it doesn't take that long to clean it up. It doesn't take that long. Even that didn't take that long to clean up, but it looks horrible. And every time I reach my, forth my hand to lay hands on somebody, it's connected to that spirit man. And I don't want one of those dust bunnies to come out on him or onto her. I don't want one of those dirty socks to come out. Come on. I don't want one of those things to come out of my spirit, man, something dirty off to the side that just is ignored. You say, well, it might not be that bad. It's just one dirty old sock. But I don't know about you. Sometimes I think of my house like a restaurant. All it takes is one cockroach in a restaurant and it messes up my meal. <laughs> That's when I got to have a refund or get out of there either way. All it takes is one. Now, I understand they usually travel in groups. Hallelujah, but that's beside the point. All it takes is one problem, and it affects my whole thing. So whenever I think of the house of God, my house, this house, not this house, but this house, my personal house, <laughs> I think of it like a restaurant. And when I go and sit, I like for it to be pretty clean. I'm not asking for perfection in a restaurant, but understand, a lot of us as a body of Christ, come on, hallelujah. We need to understand, it's not as bad as you think. Hallelujah. Not exactly. You want me to ask God? Okay. Anyway, we had fun the other day, hallelujah. Praise God. I don't know. Should I say it? I was going to say the McKenna story. Hallelujah, but I don't know if I should. That was the McKenna story. But the teacher said. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. God, he, I don't ask for God to tell me things about them or anything, ever. I don't ask God anything. And, and God just drops it in me. And McKenna, she come home and she goes, you know what my teacher said? She called a bunch of people stupid or idiots. And I was like, at first, you know, I'm thinking, well, I need to go have a talk with them. I mean, that's ridiculous. You don't just call a kid idiots. But then it dropped in my spirit immediately, the words, acting like idiots. So I told her that. And as soon as I did, it was like deer in the headlights. Hello. And all of a sudden, she goes, oh, yeah. Uh, I just love God so much. I mean, that's what she started screaming out because it wasn't, didn't call them idiots. It said they were acting like idiots. It's those few words, and I don't know why God dropped those in me that instant, but it's fun. Hallelujah. And she's just like, I love God so much that he exposed everything I do. And the thing is, we need to be excited about things like that, little things that we think just, and I'm not saying that that was a bad thing. I'm just saying, oh, I want it to be exposed. Why? Because it's a good thing. 
And let me tell you something. The new level of healings and miracles we're about to step over into that God's promised and we're about to see, it's going to be worth the price. But if we go to do something for God and we start to lay hands on people and we start to do miracles and things start to happen, and, when I, and I did say we do miracles because that's what the Bible says. Because we're coal laborers. We start to go in this, and I'm telling you, all those little things that we ignored, they're going to come to the surface because the glory comes, and it brings things to, to the surface. And I don't know about you, but I would rather get it out now than to wait till I'm like at the Bay Revival type of thing, like Nathan being up there in ministry. Come on. Flowing in the miracles, flowing into healings in front of thousands upon thousands of people and having a big fall like somebody like Todd Bentley or somebody like others. And I don't want to put them all down because understand they're all redeemable. I don't know about you, but our lifestyles are totally different. You might not like, th not like this part or that part. That's okay. It's not about that. We are all on the same team going the same direction. Just sometimes we have a little problems with the body. Hallelujah. And that's the kind of thing that causes those little dust bunnies to come up. It's those little things. Why? Because the little things are what spoils the whole vine. And I'm telling you, this morning, God told me to speak prophetically about the transition we're in. This is a transition for Revival Ways of Glory. This is a transition for the students in school and ministry. But also it's a transition, I believe, of the entire church of Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you, every one of us, we are coming to that new season to where we're going to see the glory of God change. And we're going to see the glory of God come. And we're going to see things begin to happen. That's going to wow us a bit. I don't know about you, but I want to be wowed. I want to be so, I mean, I want to just be dumbfounded. So every time we get an opportunity and we want to go to a place, we're going to go. Because I'm going to keep getting some until we have changes. And the next week, uh, like I said, we're, we're going to start doing changes as fast as we can. Hallelujah. Even the way we do worship and everything, I'm going to be in the change. Why? Because it's, it's God's strategy. And God's strategy is the best strategy. Because it's about getting close to him. Getting to a place that we want to have all his glory come so that people can get saved, delivered, and set free. Hallelujah. I said a lot of things before everyone got here, but that's okay. Hallelujah. It's all on there, and I'm telling you, we need to receive this. Hallelujah. We need to be ready. Transition is a good thing, but it's only a good thing if we go with it. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise right now. Every person listening to this, I ask God that you speak to their hearts and minds. And Lord, anyone that would be in denial, I break that off in Jesus' name. I ask for their eyes to be open. Cause their eyes to see clearly. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you don't put your finger on things to condemn us. You put your finger on things to help us get to that next place because you see things that could hinder us in the full picture. It's not about little pictures. It's about big picture. And, Lord, I thank you, Lord, that the big picture is you want to do something mighty in our lives. And as far as me and my house, we say yes and amen. Welcome to the end of this informative podcast. We hope you found it enjoyable and enlightening. With over 100 books under his belt, Bill Vincent is a true master of the written word. His works are a treasure trove of knowledge and inspiration, available at all major bookstores and online platforms. So, don't miss out on the opportunity to expand your mind and be entertained. Pick up a book by Bill Vincent today.